Hi and welcome to my run through of the Chronosus Chronobot mode in the Anachron New Fractures of Time expansion. I'm going to be using the expansion content for this run through. So we can see here we have the flux board. Uh, it's the, uh, the new board uh, main area which is going to be uh, used in the game. We have the Chronosus board which obviously is in, in prototype form at the moment but I will be showing you how that works. Uh, we have a few little bags of things in, again these are prototype. I'll explain what those are. And we have the initial setup for the game. So what we have in Fractures of Time, very quickly to go run through a few bits, uh, we have Era Zero here, which is going to have just a warp phase, and we have already a revealed super project. Then we have three eras before the impact, then the impact as usual, and then two eras post-impact, and that's all we have. Um, I'm going to be playing the Path of Unity, which is the new faction. These are the new miniatures. You can see these currently are just 3D printed. Uh, they will obviously be a lot better, higher quality in the final release, but these are looking pretty good so far. And then we have a new warp token which gives us flux, and we have my uh, player board here, and then we have the fracture device with the fracture expansion board which will move up if we do any expansions. Uh, there's some new tokens here which are glitches, which I'll show you what those do in a minute, and Anything else new to see? I don't think there's anything else quite new. Um, you can see everything's set up now, ready to begin. Oh yes, there are upgrade cards here as well. And the upgrade cards will come into play when we use this main board here. So we're going to start setting up for Era Zero. Now the first thing I've, I've already set up is I've removed this card from the upgrades which is relating to the endgame goals. So we don't need to use that because we don't use endgame goals in the Chronobot. Um, the Chronobot setup he starts with. So in the Chronosus setup, which is part of the base game as well, uh, you will have five blank tokens. They won't look like this, they'll look much nicer than that. I've just covered those to show an example. So we've got five normal ones and five blank ones. This will determine how many exosuits above the normal number, and I'll explain that when I get there, that the bot will be using. Then we also have his flux bag which will have three blank fluxes or empty flux canisters and one normal one and that determines whether he's going to do a blink action or not. So these will need to go in the bag, I'm going to set that up and then we're going to get ready for Era Zero. One other thing I forgot to say uh, during setup is I have already seeded the board with the um, tokens for the Fractures of Time expansion. Um, you can see here we have a valley left tile, a valley right tile, and a simple one flux one EC, which is, stands for energy core tile. These all obviously have icons and not text on in the final version. Um, and I've put them on the moment at the easy side. The other sides have a different colour and they all indicate there are harder difficulty. So I'm on the slightly easy difficulty, but I've randomly placed these out for now. So era zero, we're going to start doing a warp phase. I need to decide how many warp tokens I want to warp in for this era, and I think I'm going to warp in. I do start as my faction leader here, as Eldrin. Um, I start here with two flux cores ready, but I'm going to get another one because blinking is a lot of fun. So I'm going to pop one of those on there, and I get the new flux token out into my supply. And let's see what Chronobot's going to do. He's rolled one, so he's going to put one on the board there. Perfect. That is it for Era Zero. We move into Era One. So we reveal the new super project, which is the anti-gravity field. And we would shift the building stacks. I've already actually done that for the setup. So we've done the preparation already. We go move on to the paradox phase, where because there are now warp tokens here, we do a paradox roll. The bot is the first player, so he has to roll first. He gets one. So we'll give him one. And that goes onto his player board as usual. And then I have to roll for mine, so I get two straight away in the deep end there with the paradoxes. Not great for me, but we'll see how that works out. We now go into the power up phase, so I have to power up first. Um, no, that's not true, no, the, the, the bot powers up first and I can see how many he's powering up because he is first player. So for the bot's power up we have to open the red bag which contains the five normal energy cores and the five blank energy cores. And we're going to be drawing three of the tokens out. And the, let's see what he draws. We've got one blank, 
one reel and another reel. So what this means is he is going to power up two extra suits. Now usually in, before the impact he will always power up three. So there's his first three. And he's powering up an extra two. So this sort of simulates what the player board usually has where you have the three free power ups. The other ones you have to power up with an energy core. So he spent those energy cores, they go back to the supply. And the blank, if there's any one drawn, it goes back in the bag. So he's going to have five, energy, five uh, suits to use this round. Um, so I am going to power up, I think I'll power up three. And as I start with an energy core, I will pop the extra one in there. Um, I did actually put my core there, but I do start with one core. And that's going in to the supply. So I'm going to have four, he's going to have five. We'll see how we do that. Also notice I have started, we always start with a, um, a glitch on one of the exosuit bays and a glitch on the first um, slot in the fracture device. And there are ways to get rid of that, which I will go through if we need to. So the next phase is the warp phase. We want to warp in some tokens. Do I want anything? So I think I don't start, I shouldn't have started with that. Um, let me check that's correct, yes. So I'm going to actually warp in. I shouldn't have that either. There we are, that's better. And three water. So I, oh yes, no, I didn't get my water for my one spare exosuit bay. So there's my extra water. So I think I will actually, I will warp in, because I don't start with any uranium, I'm going to start with a uranium warp. There we go. And I'll put the... That's power back in there, I didn't use that. And what's he going to do? So he rolls Paradox die to what he warps in, and he's got two. He always going going strong. Now you've seen I've got lots of paradoxes already. So there we go, he's got two in there. And then we get on to the main meat of the round, which is the action round. So he's first player. Now he's gonna roll the flux die, which is numbered two, three, three, four, four, five. So it's not a normal d6, it's a different numbered. Um, and that's going to be used for his rolls and for the flux as well. So he's rolled a four. Here's his four. Now what I usually do to remember what I'm doing, to remember to move the tokens, is I put the dice in the place which he rolled and then move this on. So this is going to move around the blue track. It's going to sit there. He's going to do this action, so he's going to construct a factory. So he takes his exosuit, he's going to go into a construct spot, and he's going to take a factory. Uh, these are the factory tiles here. Um, now he always takes the highest VP one, so he's going to take this one, which is a three, and he pops it onto his board there. Now, in order to indicate when he's blinked some of these exosuits, what I'm actually going to do is actually put a reminder in there. These might be different tokens in the final version, but I'm just going to remind him that he has got that suit ready, available to blink if he wants to on a subsequent round. He obviously can't blink on the first round, but he will on subsequent rounds, and I'll show that. So my turn, my first turn, what am I going to do here? Um, so my evacuation conditions, that might be useful to see, I need one of each type of building, will get me four VP, and for every time I have upgraded the fracture device, I'll get three points. So if I do this all the way, that's worth uh, 12 points for me there. So, with that in mind, and the fact that I don't have much water, so I can't wake up my sleep people at the moment with motivation, I think I'll want to go and get a water building. So what water buildings do we have? Um, that one, well this one's quite nice, this gives you, uh, with, for a scientist that comes back awake, it gives you to remove a flux from your track and to water, that's very nice. That's one of the new buildings. And this is one of the replacement buildings, so for one gold, it's five water and a victory point. Tempted to go for the five water and the victory point at this point because the water is quite hard to come by. So water costs two titanium, and yes, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to send my engineer out. Now this cost me one water to go there, so I'll pay my water to wherever I put the supply. There's the supply up there, in there, and I'm going to build this little guy here. Pop him in there. So that's going to cost me two, but I get a discount of one because I put a scientist, in, um, not a scientist, an engineer in there. So I pay one back to the supply. There we go. And that's my turn done for now. Back to the chronobot.
he's going to roll his dice and he's got a three. So here's the three track. Move that up there. And three is to construct life support. So he's going to do another build. Both of those spots are unavailable. So usually he would go to the World Council to do that, but we're going to see if he's going to blink out of where he is in order to blink out of the council space. And actually that won't, he won't actually do that anyway, but we have to draw anyway. So let's see. And we draw one, it's a blank. So we split that aside, that'll go back in the end. If we do a real one, he would consider blinking. At the moment he wouldn't blink because if he blinks out of here, he can't then do the same action because this would no longer be full up. He can't use the world council, but he is going to place a different exosuit to the job. He'll always go onto the first player spot if he can. I'll mark that one as now available. And he is going to build a life support. So this is life support here. And 4VP is the one he's going to pick because that's most. That's annoying. That's really quite a nice one. Oh, sorry, no. Life support is the water, isn't it? There we go. So he, just, he hasn't got a choice. He has to pick that one. So that'll go in the life support bay. There we go. That's good because the, um, the other lab I want is quite nice. That's a really nice one. So he's done his turn. Back to me. What do I want to do? Um, so I do have a goal. I could get this to get the water. That's quite tempting. And I, but I would like to start paying off some of these to get some up on the time travel track. So <clears throat> there are also some nice upgrades available. So this one, once when building, I can build an extra building off the edge of the board. Not too useful now because I haven't filled up the board. Um, but this one allows me to get an extra two points whenever I reach the end of the motivation track. Um, and once I get to move it up as well when I buy it, which is quite nice. Uh, but I'm not too worried about those at the moment. I do have... <clears throat> um, no, I do have I have an awake harvester here. I'm, um, sorry, these are now called operators. They were called harvesters. I would like to get some of those at some point as well. But I think I'm going to... I'll just deploy... I'm going to send my scientist for now to go here, spend my one gold, to supply, and I'll get five water and a point. So let's get the five water. Oh, can't see that. There we are. So that's my five water and my one victory point for there. And I'm just going to put that on the top of the board there. Okay, back to the bot. These are three again. He's going to do time travel. Does he have anything he can time travel to do? Yes, he can. Oh, I've just realised as well, I haven't put my focus marker in that era. So we will start in the first era. Uh, so he's going to move... Actually, he removes the one which has the most, but he has to time travel back to here. So he's removing this one. He goes up on his time travel track. That's him done. <clears throat> so now might be a good time to show you how, to, how the blinking works. Um, I might just do that, just for the fun of it. Let's try it, shall we? So, to do a blink instead of a normal action, I have to spend a flux put on the track. We then, because I'm going to blink this guy here, who is an engineer, he's not a, a um, an operator, so I have to roll the flux die. Where's the flux die? It's on the board there. So I have to roll the flux die. It's a five. So if this is greater than equal to the number of empty spaces, I'm going to take a flame. Or a... They're no longer called flames, they are called glitches now. Um, so I've got four spaces, I've rolled five, which means I'm going to get a flame. So I have to roll this. Let's see what I get. And I've got another flux spot. So I take a glitch token. And it's just going to be easier if I do it that way around, I think. There we are. So now I have two spots blocked. So I'm going to have to want to clear up some flames soon. You'll notice I can clear up flames here by sending a, a, uh, an operator to take two off, and that might be what I do next. <clears throat> but I've done that, and that means I get to move my worker. He is going to blink across into the new sideboard here. Now, do I want to have a harvester? I can take a harvester, or an operator, rather. I can take an upgrade if I can pay for it, or I can get two flux or two energy cores. Now I've got no energy cores left at all, so what I think I'm going to do is come here and I can't really see it there, but the engineer gets a third 
or an extra, it gets plus one um, energy cost. So I'm going to take three energy cards for that. And that's nice, that will set me up for a while. I'll put those down on the board there. Um, he is now exhausted from doing that, so he has to come out and he goes all the way back into there. So I now can't blink that suit anymore. So it's time for the bots roll. Let's see what he gets. It's a four. So move the four down. See the blue's going around this way. <clears throat> so he gets one flux and one EC. So he gets one of these flux tokens. He gets one energy core. The energy core will go into the red bag and the flux token goes into the purple, appropriately coloured purple bag. And that's his turn done. Um, so because that wasn't a suit placement, he didn't check, he didn't draw any uh, test from the flux bag. So on to my turn. <clears throat> I think it might be time to send my operator down here, do some clear up. So he's going to spend two water. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. You'll see here, my leader has this ability. If I send a scientist, I can do any of those three sideboard actions. And the harvester acts as any other worker. He doesn't get any bonuses from the workers, and he still gets the penalties, but he can go as a scientist. So he's going to go here. And I'm going to do that action, and that means I don't have to pay for it. So I guess I'm actually going to take both of those off from there. So that now I have five slots, so it's going to be easier for me to blink in the future. But that's my whole turn, so over to the Chronobot. Hello, Chronosis. What are you going to do? It's another four, so he's going to go here. This slides this way because it's following this blue loop, and that is mine resources. So he's going to send someone to the mine now. Let's see if he blinks. So we draw from the bag. It is a real flux token, so he discards that, and he's going to blink one of his guys to the mine. Now which one is he going to blink? There are two there. The way he chooses is we look at the current state of the, his board here and see which action he's most likely to go to next and he wants to clear that action out. So this next action would be, would be this one in fact, would be Construct Lab, which would be here. So that's a viable one. <clears throat> um, that's another Construct. There's a Recruit, which has got nothing on it anyway. And there's a Valley right in here, there's nothing in there. So this guy stays here, but this one, he's going to blink this one. And he blinks over to here. Worker comes out, we just discard that for him because he doesn't keep the workers. And then what does he want? Well, he takes, as the normal priority, he's going to take the neutronium, which goes in his track there, and he'll take uranium as well. So there we go. His turn. What shall I do for my turn? Um, I could blink, but I have no suits with workers in, so I can't do a blink at the moment. Um, I'm only onto one worker, so I think it's time to spend my well-earned water to wake my guys up. So it's cost me five water. So there's my five water I got from my building. And all my guys wake up. There's only three of them. Two guys and a lady. They're awake, and that's my whole action. If I'd done it as a free action, I'd get another action as well. But then I would have started losing morale. So back to Chronosus. He has rolled another four. So what does he do on this four? He does a construct lab. So he's going to go and um, he might blink, so we need to test for a blink first, but he's going to go to the build spot. You see both spots are now freed up again. So let's draw and see what he gets. He gets a real one, so he's going to blink. There's only one worker he can blink, one suit he can blink. It's that one. Go down to there. Um, that goes away. And he's going to build a lab. So this is when he's going to steal this nice one I was going to have. So this one lets you put flames here instead of where you roll them. And they're still worth negative two points at the end, but they don't cover up things that you really want them, really want. And that's a 4vp one for him, so that's a nice one for him. Okay, um, I am going to start placing something out then, because I want to start doing things, and I think I want to go and get another operator now. So let's see, who shall I send? Well, if we see on the board here, if I send a scientist, I get a discount at buying upgrades, but I don't want to buy an upgrade. If I send an administrator, I get an extra 
bonus of having a flux core. So I think I will do that. I'll send my administrator. He's going to go into his suit, goes off to the valley, and he recruits an operator. And I get a flux token. So I now have three flux tokens. I'm nicely set up. And he comes in awake, so that's nice. So let's see if we're going to roll something other than a four this time. It's a three. Well, at least it's different than the four. So he's going to do valley right. So the valley right action. He's going to send a guy up to the valley. Now, again, he hasn't got any people to send because uh, he can't blink any, so he's going to have to send a real suit. So we'll get a guy in a suit for him. And he's going to go, but he, obviously that's blocked by me, so he's going to go up here to do that action. And what he does in the right hand side is he will take two flux and two energy cores. So usually the, the human player has a choice of either or, but he's greedy, he takes both of them. So he's going to get two flux and two energy cores. So these are going to go into his bags. This makes it more likely that he's going to power up suits in the future and more likely that he's going to blink in the future. That's not great for me. How dare he? Very naughty. So back to me. Um, so I have a suit in here, but I can't blink out of there. And I can't blink within the board either. So he's basically stuck. So I'm going to have to send a suit. Um, or I could send one of these guys to take one of these off, but I wouldn't really want to do that until there were two on there, because it would be more useful action then. I would like to start upgrading this though, because that's part of my um, evacuation bonus. So shall I do that, or shall I start building another building? I think I might build another building. So we have quite a nice one here, which, you know, we've got that one. It's only worth one point, but every time you send someone into the, the past, you get points equal to the number of resources you spent. And I can afford that if I send an engineer. So, as the space is free, I will send an engineer over to the building spot. He gets a discount of what, sorry, not discount, he has to pay on water for going there. And I am going to build this power station. So it cost me one of my neutronium. Uh, he gets, a, the engineer gets a discount, so I only have to pay one titanium, and I still have to pay one mortar. I'm once again running very low on water. So I built that. Lovely. And I have just a few resources left, which I can use to then do some time travel in just a minute. So Quirasus, what are you doing this time? Let's see. It's another four. Of course it is. He doesn't like twos and fives, apparently. So he's going to recruit a genius, or he's going to do research if he can't recruit a genius. He can recruit a genius, because there is one in there. Now, he hasn't got any suits on the main board, so he can't blink out of there, so there's no point checking for blink. So he will just send a work dude over to here, and he gets the genius, he goes there, and he gets a point as well, because that's he always takes the one point bonus there. And I'll just go next to his board there. Okay, let's see what I can do now. So I now do have a guy there. Um, and I might like to get some resources, but I also like to go in the future, go back to the past. Let's get some resources. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to spend a flux. I have four spots left there, so I have to roll the flux die to see if I can get a flame. It's a four, so it's equal, so I don't get a flame. Sorry, I keep calling them flames. They're not called flames anymore. They're called glitches. I'll try and remember that. So he has successfully blinked over to here. He has to come out of his suit. Uh, but because he's in the mine, he comes back awake, which is very handy. And I am going to take gold and titanium. There we go. So he is an awake guy. Um, where was he from? Oh yes, he was in there. Sorry, I knocked him. Okay, that is my action. I've done my build, my um, mining. So the bot is now going to roll for his action. He gets a five. Yay, a different number. So here we are. Well, this isn't great for me. He's going to construct a power station. So he doesn't have... Oh, he should have had a guy in there to indicate that that hasn't blinked yet. So he can blink a suit. Let's see if he does. Draw from the bag of the flux. Let's see. This is very hard to do one-handed. He's drawn a real one. That goes away. So he blinks him over to here. That guy goes away. And he wants to build a power station. So let's see what there is. 1vp or 4vp. There's no choice really there. He's going to take the 4. He's greedy for points. So he's one of each now. Very nice for him. 
And over to me, I have one guy left on here, one suit, and I have no people to blink. So I'm gonna have to send someone out. Um, but I did want to do, yeah, I'll do time travel, don't I? So let's send, I might want to keep the scientist to get some water for the next round. Um, I could send him, but he might be useful on here. Let's send this guy. So I, I need to go back one era. I can only go back one era, so I only have to spend one resource. I have two gold. I'll spend the gold back to the supply. Put this guy in here. My focus marker goes back one. I get a point for going back there. And I'm going to pay off this that I took in the zeroth round. Take that back. And because I successfully paid something off, I move up on my time travel track. Lovely. And this stays here for now. I haven't really been looking at these yet. That's a very nice one to get. That's nice if I can get multiple of them. So I might want to start thinking about saving up four titanium. Could be good because with, with an engineer discount, that's only three titanium. But I have to bin an engineer to do it. I'll think about that in a minute. So what is Chronosus going to do? It's a three. So he says construct super project. Now for the Chronosus and for the uh, improved Chronobot, if it wants to construct a super project, it has to spend a breakthrough to do so. He hasn't got any breakthroughs yet. So this is actually a failed action. So it's a good example to show you what happens. Very simply, if he can't do the action, it's failed, he takes a point. Also, because it's a main board action, usually he would have to place something in there. He will place his exosuit. So this is going up here. He, he's not gonna check for blink because he hasn't got anything he can blink. He's gonna place one up there to block it, even though he can't do the action. But I am going to mark that is blinkable because he might do that on his next turn. So that wasn't too bad for me. That could have been worse if he actually got a super project. Um, I'm just wondering now if I can afford, I could in theory afford that if I could get two triangles. With one guy I'd have to do a lot of blinking but I can't blink twice within the same, I can't blink to the same action. So I think instead hmm, what I will do just for now and I can show what this does as well so I'm going to place my um, operator in here. Now, note that it has to be an operator. It can't be a genius. Geniuses do not stand in for operators. So place them in here. I get to take two flux off my track. They go back to the supply. That's now nasty filled up there. Very good. And let's see what the bot does. So at the moment, he can blink. So he's going to do see what he does, because he might be able to blink all oh, an off-board action. It's a four. So the four is Construct Factory. So there is a space here for Construct Factory. He could blink across there to construct the factory. So let's have a look if he blinks, because if he can't, he's going to have to do a fail. It's a black one, so he doesn't blink. So he's not going to do that action. It's a failed action. He will take a point instead for this failed action. And because he hasn't actually got any to place, he doesn't place anything out on the board to replicate that. So what was I going to do? I was going to use my last... I was going to use this person, this, this lady, the scientist, to go and get some water, because that will give me four water for next round. Is there anything I want to do instead? If I want to think about getting this one, this super project, I'll need to start getting these breakthroughs, but I think I'll worry about that later. I think water is more important now, so I'm going to send her up there. She gets me four water. I'll take a five and make change with a one. I'm out of suits now. That Chronobot still has stuff in his bag, so he's going to see if he does anything more. He's got a two. The first two rolled. So he's rolled a recruit. Now, he can blink to the recruit if he draws a blink, valid blink token. I can't remember if he has any left now. It's a blank, so he doesn't. So he can't do that. It's a failed action. He gets a point. So he can start racking up these one VPs, even though they're only one. They can gather quite quickly. Uh, is there anything else I can do? I can't extend here because I haven't got any breakthroughs to place, even though it's a free action. Um, I could place two flux here, but I haven't got two flux. Um, I could place a flux to blink. Well, where would I blink my scientist? I could blink her to him. So there, yes, that will be good. Let's do that. So I'll spend my last flux. I have to roll the flux die to check if I get a flame. It's a four. It's actually probably, yes, it'll be impossible because there's five there and five is the most I can roll. But just for completeness, I've done that. So I'm going to blink my scientist down to there. She comes out. She goes back 
asleep. And I think if I'm going for this one, I need triangles. And if I go for this one, I would need a triangle and I would need specifically uh, the little circuit board on the triangle. So I think I'm just going to set the triangle as my one die I set and I'll roll the icon and I get the little target. So it's not the right one for that, but that's fine. I can use it for that possibly. So let's have a quick look. Oh, look, there it is. Pop it on my player board. And that is done. Uh, he hasn't passed yet, so he's going to carry on. He hasn't blinked, so it's a five. There's the five, so he was going wants to do research. So again, he's going to try and blink to the research, to research spot. And this is going to be a real one. Yep, that's it. He's going to blink down to here, discard his work that's there, and he's going to get a breakthrough. So let's do all that. There we are, that is a circle, so he's going to take any circle breakthrough. So now he has a breakthrough, he will be able to do the super project. I, at this point, am going to pass because there's nothing else I can do. He hasn't passed yet, but he has no exosuits. I can feel now this bag is empty, therefore he can't do anything. He passes as well. We're in to clean up. And I'm going to stop right there to reset for the next round. If you want to carry on watching, I will do the other areas in another video, but for now I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks.